Dear students, welcome to the Ask Rare Class Notes YouTube channel. Before starting the video, I request you please support and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And don't forget to like, comment, and share the video. Thanks. The paraphrasing of the poem, Mowing, written by Robert Frost. Stanza 1. There was never a sound. Beside the wood but one. And that was my long scythe whispering to the ground. What was it it? Whispered. I knew not well myself. Perhaps it was something about the heat of the sun. Something. Perhaps. About the lack of sound. And that was why it whispered and did not speak. Paraphrasing of. Stanza 1. There was only one sound near the forest, it was the soft noise of my scythe cutting the grass. What was it saying? I wasn't sure. Maybe it was talking about how hot the sun was. Or maybe it was about how quiet it was. And that's why it made a whispering sound instead of talking. Stanza 2. It was no dream of the gift of idle hours or easy gold at the hand of Fay or elf. Anything more than the truth would have seemed too weak. Paraphrasing. It wasn't some fantasy. About free time or laziness. Or getting easy riches from fairies or magic. Anything more than the simple truth would feel too insincere. Stanza 3. To the earnest love that laid the swale in. Rose. Not without feeble pointed spikes of flowers, pale orchises, and scared a bright green snake. Paraphrasing. For the genuine love of work that laid the grass in neat rows. Not without. Leaving behind some small, delicate flowers, light colored orchids, and startling a bright green snake. Stanza 4. The fact is the sweetest dream that labor knows. My long scythe whispered and left the hay to make. Paraphrasing. The simple truth is the best dream that hard work can have. My scythe whispered as it cut and left the grass to become hay. The central idea of the poem. Mowing. The central idea of mowing is the profound satisfaction and truth found in honest labor and the connection with nature. The poet, Frost, meditates on the quiet, rhythmic act of mowing grass, suggesting that the simple, honest work brings a deeper, more genuine satisfaction than any fantasy or idle dream. The summary of the poem Mowing. In the poem Mowing, Robert Frost talks about the calm and quiet experience of using a scythe to cut grass in a field. The speaker listens to the soft sound the scythe makes and thinks about what it might be saying. It's not about daydreaming or imagining magical things, but rather about the real and simple pleasure of working hard and being close to nature. The act of mowing and the peace it brings is the sweetest reward. The paraphrasing of the poem, The Eagle, written by Alfred Tennyson, stanza 1. He clasps the crag with crooked hands, close to the sun in lonely lands, ringed with the azure world, he stands. Paraphrasing of stanza 1. He grips the steep rock with his bent claws. High up near the sun in a deserted place, surrounded by the blue sky, he stands still. Stanza 2. The wrinkled sea. Beneath him crawls. He watches from his mountain walls. And like a thunderbolt he falls. Paraphrasing of stanza 2. The rough sea below moves slowly. He looks out from his high rock walls. And suddenly he dives down like lightning. 
the central idea of the poem, the eagle. The central idea of the poem, the eagle, is the majesty and power of nature, embodied in the figure of the eagle. Tennyson vividly depicts the eagle's solitary strength and its commanding presence in the natural world, culminating in its powerful, sudden dive that emphasizes its dominance and grace. The summary of the poem, The Eagle, The Eagle, by Alfred, Lord Tennyson is a short poem that describes an eagle perched high up on a steep rock. The eagle grips the rock tightly and stands alone, very close to the sun and surrounded by the blue sky. The sea far below moves slowly, and the eagle watches from its high perch. Suddenly, the eagle dives down quickly and powerfully, like a lightning bolt, showing its strength and majesty. The paraphrasing of the poem, Crossing the Bar, written by Alfred Lord Tennyson. Stanza 1. Sunset and evening star, and one clear call for me. And may there be no moaning of the bar, when I put out to sea. Paraphrasing of stanza 1. As the sun sets, and the evening star appears, and I hear a clear call beckoning me. I hope there's no sorrow or lament when I set sail on my final journey. Stanza 2. But such a tide as moving seems asleep, too full for sound and foam, when that which drew from out the boundless deep turns again home. Paraphrasing of Stanza 2. But may it be a tide that moves so gently it seems still, so full that it makes no noise or waves, when the force that came from the endless ocean returns back home. Stanza 3, Twilight and Evening Bell, and after that the dark. And may there be no sadness of farewell, when I embark. Paraphrasing of stanza 3, as twilight falls and the evening bell rings, and then darkness follows, I hope there's no sorrow in saying goodbye, when I begin my journey. Stanza 4, for though, from out are born of time and place, the flood may bear me far, I hope to see my pilot face to face, when I have crossed the Bar. Paraphrasing of stanza 4. Even though the currents may carry me far beyond our world of time and space, I hope to meet my guide directly once I have crossed the boundary. The central idea of the poem Crossing the Bar. Crossing the Bar by Alfred Lord Tennyson is a reflective poem about facing the end of life. The speaker imagines their final journey across the boundary between life and death, symbolized by a ship setting out to sea. They express a wish for a peaceful departure, free of sorrow and lament. The poem conveys a sense of calm acceptance and hope, with the speaker looking forward to meeting a divine guide, the pilot, after crossing this threshold. The imagery of the sea and the journey highlights the transition from life to the afterlife. The summary of the poem, Crossing the Bar. In Crossing the Bar, Alfred, Lord Tennyson explores the serene acceptance of death as a natural transition from life to the afterlife. The poem uses the metaphor of a sea voyage to represent this journey, with the bar, symbolizing the boundary between the known world and the unknown beyond. The speaker expresses a desire for a peaceful and undisturbed departure, free from sorrow, and looks forward to meeting a divine guide or pilot upon crossing this threshold.
Overall, the poem conveys a sense of calm anticipation and continuity, suggesting that death is not an end but a continuation of the soul's journey. If you like my this efforts, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and do not forget to like and share the video.